In order to gain life, you should gain it here and now. And every person has this chance, and everyone is capable of it. The only thing is that you shouldn't want anything from anyone. You need to work yourself and be sincere and be honest with yourself. Do not give, do not put the power of attention into things that you don't need. And that's all. It's very simple, guys. Yes, colorful pictures, yes, colorful... All sorts of, let's say, temptations that come in and unfold at the level of primary consciousness. But as soon as we put the power of attention there, they start to come alive. They gain three-dimensionality in our head. Until then, they are two-dimensional. At the level of two-dimensionality, eliminate whatever it offers you and whatever it gives you, if you do not need it, and nothing will happen. There will be no fear, there will be no impossibilities to perform the same spiritual practice or anything. There will be no intrusive ideas. This is, you know, it's like a spam filtering. It came and got sent into the spam folder. That's all. And and didn't even touch you. Consciousness is information. All other reactions are reactions that occur at the level of the body, at the level of everything. This is a consequence of implementation of this information. This is so you understand. Consciousness can't force you, and the system can't force you to make one or another choice as a personality. But you put the power of attention into this program, and you implement it you and no one else. You as a personality can implement it. And the whole trick of your consciousness is to deceive you as a personality and to draw you into this process of observation and self-resistance. Consciousness always tries, even a spiritual practice. For instance, a person has felt something, has realized something, but consciousness tries to analyze it and give it a logical explanation. When a person is performing a spiritual practice, he understands everything. Or when a prayerful state comes, when it really comes over a person, as they say, the Holy Spirit descends, mean the person has a holistic comprehension. And then, after returning to a so-called normal state of a natural human, mortal one, the consciousness naturally begins to analyze it all, well, to rearrange it in its own way, in order to convince the personality that it was all nonsense. And here a lot of various doubts arise. Did it happen or did it not? And here is where the personality has a choice whether to listen to consciousness and its denial of everything spiritual, or to live by the spiritual, because it exists. that love, that life, which a person finds. And to exchange it here for something, well, there is nothing which it can be exchanged for, really nothing. All the rest, well, it's values imposed by consciousness. A person can have nothing here, and he cannot possess anything that would be much more valuable than real life. When a person is really aiming at spiritual development, he strives for life, then nothing can influence him. I will give a simple example. When you have turned towards the sun, you see the sun and you are striving for it. And the sun in this case is like a metaphor of life, of eternal life, of life that doesn't end. And when you're really going towards it, you see no shadows. There aren't any, and there can be no shadows. And nobody can influence you in any way, no matter how much he wants to. But when you turn your back to the sun and go into the thick of the forest, then the deeper you enter the forest and the further you move away from the sun, the more shadows are around, and the less chances you have to get out of this forest. In order for a person to feel God's love, he himself should learn to love first. A person must earn it, he must endeavor, he must attain, he must begin to live, he must desire it, he must strive for it. Then it will come. And he, let's say, in this case, must, having overcome himself, stop listening to his consciousness. So he denies it, curses, but the person keeps moving because he feels this is the truth. 
For as long as you listen to I can't, it cannot, it will never be able to, but you can, you really can. What a personality experiences in a contact with the spiritual world? Well, it's hard to describe real happiness, it's hard to put into words. This is that boundless love, well, it's really happiness. When there is a sincere love, when a person really awakens and correctly performs his prayer or his spiritual practice, then this revelation, this communication takes place. He doesn't need anything material, you see, and here it starts to grow. That is, precisely these moments, they awaken one, and they give one strength, because attention is invested not in the external, but in the internal. And here personality already gains experience and practice communicating with the spiritual world, and the spiritual world is boundless. This very world here is precisely a slight hallucination, it's like an instant. When a person encounters, and people often encounter this divine spiritual manifestation with a droplet of Allah, he experiences that, which penetrates, as they say, the depth of the soul. Can anything in this world produce a similar experience? Here even such a small experience, it shows how everything is worthless in the material world in comparison with the spiritual world. But a person, after all, without any experience, he is just this, you know, this is like when there is a strong wind, there is a wave and you are far, far away from the shore, but a drop from the ocean has hit you. And you have the opportunity to settle in this ocean and become a part of this ocean. Personality is precisely that which emerges in deep prayer practices, real, correct ones, while at perception through feelings, when there is only love, when there is a natural fusion, while speaking in earthly language with God's world, when there is manifestation of spiritual, real manifestation within a person himself, inside, in the depth, not somewhere outside. If a person feels something outside, all this is the system, all these are again the trees of consciousness. When there is this internal state, deep, genuine, it cannot be confused with anything. When a person gains freedom, when all thoughts rebound like Satan from God, that is what real spiritual experience is. Yet, can this be preserved? It can be. But if a person does not preserve and loses it right away, well, this is his choice, but anyway, it's a chance. And what's the point? The point is just that, if a person really has a desire to live, he lives. I mean to live spiritually, spiritually free, if this is his main goal. If a person wants to live, if he has experienced it, felt that he is a personality, he just must not lose it. It should be like that all the time, whatever you do. Love is the ultimate understanding, it is that. But the words end on how to describe it, what love is. Love is when there is happiness, inner happiness, it's real life, it's freedom. We can associate love it is happiness with internal freedom. Do you understand? An immense one. It is that which erases all boundaries and eliminates all fears. Then there can be neither fear of that of the body nor anything else, because the person gains an understanding that he cannot die. But it only comes when, again, when he gets freedom. And he gets freedom only when he... His main goal in his life is to find this aspiration and when he is focused on life. Well, so let's say, then he finds it. Meaning, when most of the forces given for the acquisition of life are spent on acquiring life. And this inner unity, it is the inner content and the integrity, say, spiritually. It is precisely that love, that internal freedom, it is what gives this life. But in order for this to happen, you have to get there. You need to gain this freedom.